Hey guys, my name is Daniel. Today I'm going to talk to you about Electron, which is uh, a nice framework for making applications in JavaScript. So we've done a lot here as budding developers. We've made numerous websites. We've worked with different frameworks. And some of our cohorts have also taught us how to make native applications for mobile devices like Android and iOS. But one thing we haven't touched are desktop applications, and that's where Electron comes in. So what is Electron? Basically, it lets you write desktop applications using just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All the things we've been learning, all the things we're already good at. So that's pretty awesome. And the cool thing is, is from the user's perspective, these are going to be just normal applications. They're going to go to a website, download them, install them. They'll never know the difference between it being made in JavaScript versus you know, a fancier language. And for us developers, though, these are just websites. They're just making a website, nothing different. So, like, what, what, what's the big deal? You just said we're doing, doing something different. The cool thing is, is that you have access to all of the Node API with these apps because we know that the server is going to be running basically with the app. So if you go back to the first few weeks of full stack, we learned that you can't take it for granted like where the server is. It could be all the way in Norway somewhere, and our client is probably just our own machines, our own laptops. So you can't, for say, use a file search function inside the client because the client doesn't know anything about the server and its file structure. But with Electron, the server and the client reunite once again. So what can we build with Electron? Basically anything. A good example is Slack. We're all using Slack. You might not have known. This is just a web browser that looks like an application made using Electron. Pretty cool. So having all of this knowledge, you may want to know how you can, oh wait, let's actually, let's talk about some more cool apps. Uh, Itch.io is a cool um, repository of indie games, very similar to Steam. It's an Electron app. NDM is a GUI that works on top of Node. MongoDB is like the post code for Mongo, and Superpowers is a game framework. And all of these work with Electron, and they're all just websites. A few more, some, a lot of chat apps out there, music players, text editors, and even web browsers, which means browsers working inside of a browser, which is kind of weird, but that's the thing, apparently. So knowing this, we can go ahead and talk about setting up Electron for yourselves. It's very simple. You just uh, npm install Electron. You want to do it globally so that you have access to the Electron command. And there's some good demos uh, at their website if you want to download those as well. But you can go from scratch if you want. You can venture off <laughs> into uncharted territories. All you need are three files, the package.json, the main.js file, which is where Electron does all of its magic, and an index.html file. Now, you don't have to do it alone because there's a lot of repositories out there already that give you the boilerplate. So I'm not going to go into it too much. But basically, the package.json, you want to name your start file main.js because obviously that's part of the requirements here. Main.js just creates the browser window. So that's where you would specify the width, the height, there's some other properties, but those are the big ones. Uh, what to do when it opens and closes. There's just some differences between how Windows and Mac handles those events. So you set that up there. And the index.html file is basically just a normal index.html file. Nothing special there. So let's take a look at a very, very simple example. So the point of this example is to demonstrate that Electron is interacting with our file structure because the web browser not having access to Node can't peek into the computer normally. So the first thing I'll do is just open it up in a web browser. And again, it's super simple. This is just for demonstration. But we have our website here. It's opening up in Chrome because it's just an index file. And the functionality is to just check out the files on our system. But if I click it, like nothing happens. So if you go getting some errors here, we can go to the console, see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Go to the tools. And yeah, tons of error messages seeming to stem from index.html. And if we take a look, it kind of makes sense. Like we have a button on click that's trying to use process.environment.home. That's clearly a node process, so the browser has no knowledge of node. And then down here, we're using require, but 
there's no webpack, there's nothing going on there. So it makes sense why this would not work in the browser. But with the Electron version, I can go to Launchpad, actually, because it's a, a real application. And I can load up the Electronic Files app. And here, I can see all of my files. And again, this just proves that Electron is using Node even in what looks like a normal web uh, code base. So I can take a look at you know, my documents, maybe go to full stack, uh, stackathon, what am I doing there? Not much yet. <laughs> and let's see, actually, I'll just back up. Because there's so little happening there just yet. But I could go to Electron, go to my demos, and I can actually uh, kind of mock the fake version of this. I can open the web browser version from the souped up version and just like laugh at it that it can't do anything. <laughs> so that is, I mean, that's basically the demo. So I do want to talk about a few more things, though. And that is, since, again, this is just a website, if we looked at the code, it'd be very familiar to all of you. You can do anything in Electron that you can do in a website, which means you can keep using all the frameworks. You can use Webpack to build things. You can run scripts from the package.json. And you can continue using React as well. And of course, if you want to use these things, you can go through the normal setup. NPM installing Webpack, React, SAS, Babel, the whole laundry list. But as I mentioned, there's already a lot of great tools out there. So just rely on the boilerplates. Go to these links. Find, um, chances are, Electron has a, a good long list of all, of all these boilerplates. So go there, check out a framework that you like, see if there's already something there for you. And it also has like components, um, systems for making menus, just a lot of different good assets for you. So I would recommend that for sure. And in conclusion, again, Electron is just a very simple way to use the languages we already know to make potentially complex apps. And just to prove it and how useful these apps can be, this entire presentation and everything in it was made using just Electron apps. So Visual Studio Code, surprisingly, is an application that's just a web browser that we use. Um, MARP is a markdown to slide program. So all these slides are made using MARP. Vector is an imaging software that made the Electronic <coughs> Files app icon. Uh, Pexels load or shows um, free stock footage images that I use to generate this so I don't get sued by stealing images from the website, from the internet. And of course, I used electronic files to open files while I was making them. Not really, but I could have. And that's it. Thanks.